What's up guys, it's your boy Paul. Glad you're back with me, and this is Ride Out Reviews. Today, man, I wanna talk about my journey through the Harry Potter movies. I wanna give you guys my Christian perspective. To be honest with you, I remember as a kid, people in the church just hating on these movies, man, so much, just because of the witchcraft in them. And that's probably why I hadn't watched him, man. But as I have grown up in my faith and my knowledge of God and who he is and Jesus, man, I gotta disagree with him just a bit, guys. See, J.K. Rowling has some pretty deep meaning that that is seen in these movies, man. I think that a person can grow deeply as a person if they just look and see the themes that are displayed throughout. It's trust brotherhood, family. These are major themes in this movie, and I loved it. Ron, Hermione, and Harry have such a wonderful relationship in these movies, man. Hermione, and especially Ron and his family, become like the, the, the family that Harry Potter was missing in his entire life. The love and devotion for him, I believe, made him a better person. Just a genuine care for all people and a strong sense of morality portrayed by that family, the Weasleys, I think that helped build Harry's character. But I think that there's a more powerful theme at work in this book. That theme is choices. And this is one that I want to discuss. And I think probably hands down one of the most important lines in this series, I think it's the one that Dumbledore gives to Harry. He says, Dark and difficult times lie ahead. Soon we must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. And in combination with that, Serious Black said, the, the world isn't split into good people and death eaters. We've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. Those lines are the themes that, that, that play through all of the main characters in this series, I think, man. And we can just take the Malfoys, for example. Narcissa had to make a choice. She chose her son over Voldemort. And that's a choice that created the opportunity for Voldemort's defeat. See, she loved her family more than the cause. Draco's the sad part though, man. I mean, he was young and dumb and, and of course, but, but when he had to face a decision to make, who he would serve, light or dark, good or evil, right or wrong, I don't think he ever actually chose. I mean, he didn't want to kill Dumbledore. He didn't want to have any part in that treacherous situation. He didn't turn state on Harry, when Harry's face was blowed up like a, uh, like the elephant man. And he didn't, Avakadava! Harry in a room of requirement, you know? And when called to join on Voldemort's crew when they thought that Harry was dead and gone, he hesitated. And he really only went at the urging of his mother and his father. And that's really what's sad about Malfoy is, is that in his non-decision, because he didn't decide, we consider him on the wrong side, man. I mean, we felt for him those last three movies, especially, man. I mean, for sure he was just broken, but but he was still on the wrong side. He did what was easy. Now, I think maybe that last scene might have given us a glimmer of hope, you know, but, and maybe he turned around, you know, it's not a death eater and the blood and racism and put all that behind him, but I don't know, man. Man, we got Snape too. He definitely made some wrong decisions which some definitely wouldn't blame for him because, uh, I mean, even joining the Death Eaters and their evil on Wizarding World, he did some bad stuff. But like Sirius said, he said the side that we choose to act on is who really we are. So why is Snape low-key the hero of the story? Well, he made the hard decision. He made the morally right decision. Not the easy ones that he did in the past by joining them folks just because they were cool. But going back in the darkness of the Death Eaters and even giving his life for the protection of Harry, those are some difficult and tough things. And even though, to be honest, man, I was mad at his death. I couldn't believe it, man. I wish that they would have gave him a death where he literally died protecting Harry like he jumped in front of a Kedavra cell or stuff like that, man. That's bogus. He died with... With because of the wrong like idea, the wrong intention over the doggone elders one. But ultimately, we got to talk about Harry, man. Ultimately, we got to talk about Harry, and that's the one I want to talk about. Not in just a moral sense, 
but a spiritual sense. See, Harry literally had two sides in him. He had Voldemort, the ultimate evil, and he had his own humble nature. I mean, he daily felt more and more consumed by Voldemort's hate, yet still felt the love of his parents and their sacrifice. And the love of his surrogate family, the Weasleys, Sirius Black, Lupin, and Hermione. Though no doubt that J.K. Rowling, you know, didn't allegorize, but I believe that this struggle is real in all of us. But it's best exemplified or explained in the Christian scriptures. See, this Voldemort or corruption inside Harry was not the way Harry was meant to be. He was not born to be a horcrux and contain part of, of Voldemort's soul in him. It just happened. Sin or evilness in man is the same way. Humankind was, was not meant to be corrupted with sin, but it happened. But unlike Harry, it happened at our own doing. We eat sin and are sinful. So now we as humans struggle every day to do what is right, what is good, and what is holy. And the sin in us must be destroyed. And that's the only way that it can be destroyed is in death. See, Harry had to die in order for Voldemort's soul to be destroyed. And he willingly sacrificed himself. According to the scriptures, we must do the same to sin. We must die with Christ on the cross. What this means is that, is that we have to die to our own desires, our own hopes and our dreams and submit to the Lordship of Jesus. And the only way one can do that is to have faith that if we will do, that God will destroy the sin in us. In this death, however, Harry was raised back to life. He was a new creation. He no longer had Voldemort's soul, but he was free. And this is how it is for those who believe in Jesus. It says that we are raised to life with Christ. And just as Christ rose from the dead, we will be raised with him. And he will raise us all up on the last day to a new glorified body is what the scripture said. And in an interview, J.K. Rowling did say that these books do have themes with the Christian faith. So it's not a surprise to be able to see or glean these ideas from our writings, though obviously they are not true allegories. It's a powerful message, I believe, that can be seen from reading these books along with love and forgiveness. Also powerful messages in this. Man, I appreciate you guys for listening to my thoughts on this movies and just how you can actually see a strong Christian perspective from this, man. And I obviously don't believe that these are Christian movies, but I think that a lot could be gleaned, a lot could be seen in their depictions of the world that do have comparisons to the Christian faith. Thanks for watching guys. And remember to choose what is right, not easy. I'll see you guys in the next video.